my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I am going to be talking about book three in the Bloodline series, which is Indigo Spell by Rochelle Mead. And holy crap, I am loving this series. I definitely am liking it more than Vampire Academy. I don't know why, I just really enjoy Sydney as a narrator. I'm loving having more Adrian in the picture, and just all the characters I wish we had seen more of, we are seeing more of. So, I am just going to go into the spoilers section, so if you have not gotten this far in the series yet, click away now, and come back after you read up to this point. Because really, what are you doing watching this video if you have not read this far? So, spoiler time! So, we start the book off with Miss Terwilder waking Cindy up in the middle of the night and taking her out into the desert to perform a spell. So, since the book started, Cindy has really changed a lot. She is accepting the fact that she is naturally talented at human magic and she is embracing that more. And she wants to use it to protect herself and those she cares for. So, go Sydney! And apparently, Mrs. Tillowork... I don't know why I keep stumbling over her name. Her teacher's sister is in the area and that's not good. Because her sister is obsessed with power and eternal youth and she basically has to find five magic using victims every once in a while and she drains them of their power and their youth and puts them in a coma which they don't wake up from and her teacher's worried that Sydney might be a target first of all so she's trying to do everything she can to protect Sydney as well as hunt down her sister to try and stop her from this crazy task of hers and if not she'll do what needs to be done and probably kill her so that's kind of a challenge throughout the book, making sure that Sydney is safe and any other magic-using young women in the area are safe too. And Sydney also has to deal with some own personal drama because apparently Adrian in the last book confessed that he loved her and wants to be with her. First off, that is wrong on so many levels to Sydney. She is an alchemist, so naturally she should not like be like vampires. She is more fond of them than an alchemist should already, so no way in hell can she be in a relationship with one. And then there's the whole idea that human and vampire mixing is totally taboo, not just to the alchemist, but to the Maroi too, so it's like doubly wrong what Adrian wants. So after some sulking, you know, he figures, okay, you won't return my feelings, but that's not going to stop me from liking you or loving you. So I'm going to love you from afar, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Cindy's reaction to that is pretty funny. She's like, no, how dare you love me from afar when I don't want you to. I do like how Adrian handles that. He's not in total sulk mode. At least he was in the beginning, but not so much later on, which is good. Good job, Adrian. Then there's the fact that Cindy is trying to find this ex-alchemist, Marcus Finch, that the alchemist claim does not exist, but she knows does because she has proof, like photo proof, that he is real. So she's trying to track him down and figure out what his deal is. And Cindy's questioning the alchemist more, which I wholeheartedly approve of. So by some miracle, she does find him and he, he doesn't really live up to her expectations. After a while, she realizes he talks a talk, but he doesn't act. Not like Sydney does. And they do realize the alchemists are keeping secrets, not just from their other alchemists, but from the Maroi too. They have some sort of connection, like current connection, to the Warriors of Light, which we met in the last book. And that just screams, not good. So nothing good can come from that. Marcus actually helps her with her tattoo. He actually revealed that the alchemist tattoos can have some kind of mind control in them. Not all of them have mind control initially, but if an alchemist proves troublesome, they re-ink them. They insert, like, more potent ink into their tattoos that inserts more of a control over them. They have found a way to kind of break the magic on the tattoo, which they did on Sydney. And there's a second step to this where they seal the tattoo, and that's basically tattoo over it with this indigo ink like Marcus has and that kind of keeps them from being re-inked and having the tattoo reactivated by the alchemist because yeah you can deactivate the tattoo but the alchemist can still reactivate it at any time 
So the only way to prevent that is to tattoo over it with special ink. Sydney, she doesn't want to get her tattoo done over. So she says, you know, I'm sneaky. You really could use someone on the inside at all times. So I'm going to stay with the alchemist for now. And I'll take the risk of them finding out and re-inking me. And can I say I love the twist with like this magic draining witch on the rampage. It's not who we think it is. I love how it's not Miss Terwilder's sister who's doing the draining. It's like her apprentice. And there's this epic showdown, but she gets away. And there were a few victims. Some victims were drained, but they did manage to stop things for now. And Cindy, yeah, she's a badass magic user. So Cindy was going to get her tattoo sealed, but she did has started to realize this is not good. I don't want this. I don't want to run away from those I care about. She really has grown to care about Adrian, Jill, and Eddie and everybody. So she decides not to go to Mar with Marcus to get her tattoo sealed. Cause she would obviously have to leave the alchemist if she got that done because it would be kind of obvious. He doesn't like it because she could easily be caught. It's happened before. But she wants to do this because frankly Marcus is not doing much acting. He talks, she acts. And Cindy has realized she does care for Adrian, which which made me do a lot of fangirl squealing when that happened and they actually got together and it made me very happy. But that is also making me kind of nervous because this is only the third book and there are, what, three more Fiery Heart than Silver Shadows is coming out later in the month. And then there's the last one some point next year, I think. So I'm very nervous to see what happens to their relationship in the coming books. Especially at the very end, another Tom Pierre comes to help guard Jill and everybody. And I'm not sure how I feel about him. I'll probably form more of an opinion on him in the next book if we see more of him. Which I'm assuming we will. And holy crap, Cindy's sister has come to Amberwood and she is there to help out with Jill. Just gotta say, that timing really sucks now that she's not only practicing magic and being close to vampires, she's in a relationship with one, so that's gonna really put a damper on things. Not to mention, she did not want her sister to be part of the Alchemist. Now she is, and shit's gonna hit the fan, and I can't wait. I can't wait, things are gonna get real and awesome, and there's gonna be drama, I'm assuming, and awesomeness. So, all in all, things are awesome in this series. I love it. I can't wait to keep reading. And, yes! That is it for this book review, and I hope to see you guys next time. See ya!